Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be recapping The Real Housewives of Potomac, episode 14, Shakeups and Makeups. Now, honestly, I was just thinking to myself, trying to remember all the events that happened in the previous episode, until suddenly, I just see banging of plates and tables. I'm like, oh my god. These girls, what is going on? We see Sharice and Karen going at it in a screaming match. And I felt like I shouldn't even be a witness of this. I felt like this is a moment that we should not even be seeing right now. But we're seeing it. So, of course, I'm taking in the tea. They're both like going at each other. keeping Keep my mother out your mouth. Keep mothers out your mouth. I'm like... What is going on? The look on the girls' faces witnessing what was going on. Uh, they, they were shocked. And you know, Karen, she gets to the root of why she feels so much animosity towards Sharice. And it's because she questions the genuineness of Sharice coming to her mother's funeral. And you know... When you're going through grief, you want all your people to be surrounded you that you can trust and feel that it's a safe space to grieve. Now, imagine you're in a funeral of your, for your mother and the person that you didn't even want to see is the first person who's in your face. I don't want to I don't want to be around that. I would feel the same exact way. Even if the person feels like they're doing it in good intentions, as Sheree says, I don't want someone that I don't like, per se, to be around me in my most vulnerable, darkest hour, you know? Come on, you have to have some sense. You have to have time and place, you know? And Sharice, I she should think much more, made better decisions before just invading Karen's space. And not respecting that Karen, obviously, she wants distance from her. I don't think that it takes a genius to understand or eliminate, oh, what are the possible reasons why she's upset with me? And then you know this because she throws it in her face the moment she gets, oh, I was there for you, but you weren't there for me. It's kind of kind of psychotic and very, you know, looking in. And only seeing yourself and not taking it, taking the time to step back and look at the other person and what they're going through. So I truly feel like Sharice is in the wrong in this situation. And you see the green eyed bandits, they pretty much support and rile up Sharice. Like, yeah, Sharice, you're in the right. There's no reason why she should be treating you this way. If anything, she's trying to respect you by being cordial giving you your space and letting you allow to have your relationship with the other girls in the group. Miss Karen had not said, oh, take my side or take her side. She is just, you know, in her space, in her moment, saying that, you know, if Sharice is there, I could kind of be around her, but not as engaging. So there's obviously a boundary that is set up. I don't know why the girls don't get it or why they just... Don't think it should even matter that Karen is putting up a boundary towards Sharice. And I do feel like all bets was off because Karen's family talks, you know, try to talk to her, give her some sense to say, you know, it could be genuine. We don't know if it isn't. Give it the benefit of the doubt. As long as she doesn't use it to like come on the show as a talking point, I think we should just accept it as she's being genuine. So all bets were off when Sharice, even though the footage wasn't used, this was an unseen footage, she came around where there's a, the group of girls and the cameras were present. It's not like the cameras were not present and she brought that up. So there was a possibility of this being on the show. So in Karen's mind... All bets are off. And also, her intent is shown. Clearly, clearly, she didn't really w was there to support Karen as a good friend. She was really there just to have that moment and keep it in the files. To possibly use it in the future where it would benefit her. And you see it because 
when you watch the scene, it's really Charisse who start to make more of a commotion about it. More of it, oh, it's not a fair and balanced friendship that they have. That she feels that she's much kinder and more respectful towards Karen. And Karen, she doesn't reciprocate that back. But you have to think to yourself, why would an individual not necessarily want to be around you? She hasn't been outright rude. She just, Karen just politely excused herself out, out of situations that include Cherise. She doesn't purposely go out the way to make Cherise feel unwelcome. She let her have her relationships with the girls. So I don't know why it's a pressing point for these girls for Karen to be friends with her. You don't, no one can force you to be friends with anybody. And it's just mind-boggling that this is the camel. This is the straw that broke the camel's back pretty much for Robin. Because Robin is so adamant and almost gets quite emotional about the situation. And she actually wants Karen to be exposed. So it's not necessary that Karen... It's not necessary that Robin actually is an ally for Charisse, more as though that she wants to expose Karen and this is a means to an end this is the way to do it so I just see like this is like ugh, I did not like this scene I felt like this is a pretty much a three-on-one with Giselle and Robin and Charisse going at it towards Karen and Karen she holds her own and it it just gets even worse and it's like ugh and of course, a moment like this awards you a confessional, which is what Sharice wants. I feel like Sharice, she wants to be on the show. And I feel like the way she's going about it, I said, this is not your in. This is not your way in to Potomac, into our television. Like, no, this is not the way to win America's hearts for sure. And definitely with her confessional look, no, 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 no. I felt like what saved her look for this confessional was her makeup because her makeup was blended very nicely, very beautif beautifully done. But I do feel like her hair could have been a different look. I felt like whoever is styling her hair is not doing her justice because she's a beautiful woman. And I feel like the hair make it can make it or break it. So if you don't get the hair done right, everything else would be just pretty much for in, in vain. And it sucks because, you know, you went through all that to have this moment to be called back for a confessional. To, so give us a good confessional look. And I feel like she has yet to produce a really sickening look for the confessionals that we wait to see for every new episode. So back to the argument. Sharice is going at it. Karen is going back at it, and you know Karen is sticking up to her, sticking up for herself by saying, "You know, Sharice, you're just a mean girl. You do this to everybody. This is what you're known for: breaking up families." And when she said that, Sharice, she went harder and dragged to the point that we uncover new tea. While you, while everyone in this you know franchise beats down on Karen, saying, "Oh, she has a boyfriend. She has a secret lover." We already hear some rumblings about that. But on top of that, Charisse tells everyone that Miss Karen was in rehab, and I'm like, "Are you a friend or are you a foe?" Because a friend could never, a friend could never expose something like that in that manner. In a way, she really exposed and revealed herself to Karen. So it's amazing, but also shocking and disgusting and distasteful that she will utilize rehab as shade. That cannot be shit. That's not fun. This this episode, it was like fight after fight after fight. I didn't like it. I was like, if the gutter could even be even lower, if the standard could be even lower, like how much lower can they go? And on top of that, why does it have to be a rehab in Florida? Like nothing good comes out of Florida. It's just like this was not the moment that Cherise thought it was going to be and 
it's just unfortunate that this is what these girls think is what will entertain us. And it's just not it. In this episode, Candace, she doesn't really have much major moments on her own, but more of supporting moments. So she segues over to Jacqueline and Mia. And it seems like, you know, the newcomers are really trying to carry the season. And she wants them to talk, pretty much resolve their differences. And we see that not at the group meeting at the group dinner but after after there was an after party so it seems like they were recording the girls separately and i thought oh we may get some interesting moments like we have gotten before from behind the scenes that you know that they cover that themselves that they record themselves but it wasn't really like the actual cameras cameras followed me and jacqueline and it seemed like the girls were on their own like having a party so now we're in mia and jacqueline's hotel room and they're having pretty much the talk to to kind of settle and get back on a better path or what it seems to be a better path but it seems like mia just wants to hold jacqueline to the worst possible rumor or truth about a person like you want her to claim that she slept with married men and i'm like girl are you serious like who's gonna claim that like why would that make sense for her to claim that even if it was true even if it was false like no one wants that on them or to be associated associated to them you know so i'm like mia do you even want this friendship like why are you treating it like it's nothing in front of us it's like it's like when your friend wants to act up because she has a scene but this was not even like in front of the girls but they knew they were recording so i don't know i don't understand what mia is thinking when she treats jacqueline this way so now we're in day two of mexico and ashley is gonna lead the group of girls to her yoga class called kudalini which looks like so much fun i wonder if this is like something that she came up with or this is a thing that has been going on because i never heard of this before but it sounds so interesting and therapeutic so i was hoping more of the girls would participate but of course they broke off into their groups so only mia jacqueline and giselle participated the other girls did not seem much interested in participating in this or like they even I don't think I don't think everyone was ready to actually come together in the morning to do this group activity because of last night. So you see the girls who join into the yoga class enjoy Kudalini. Giselle had her moment where she makes jokes about her sex life, which, you know, she does this, but you don't really get to know much of it. The previous episode we got a little bit more insight. A little bit to her dating life but i wish she was more transparent and more open as these other girls who put their relationships on the line so in perfect timing once yoga ends the girls all meet up and it's time to go to the cenotes so en route to the cenotes robin shares that she has a wedding date and i'm like eh, uh, why why set yourself up like I don't think it should even be a talking point at this point if you don't want the scrutiny. And the girls, you know, because you brought it up, they're going to ask. They're going to say, so when is it? They, they're they curious. They want to be supportive, but they also want to know the tea if this is really going to happen. And she, you know, she goes back to say, oh, it's not really none of their business. She doesn't even want, like, gifts to be sent. And the girls are kind of disappointed because it's like, you, you brought us along for this ride to not see you cross the finish line and it's kind of disappointing you know and it's kind of also a a situation where she tells them that she doesn't want a traditional wedding she wants more of an intimate wedding which if she had said that in the beginning the girls would have been much more understanding it's just hearing the details kind of slowly makes you wonder if it's really a serious moment for them 
So the girls are having fun in the cenote. The only thing that they complain about is the flies that were biting them and they were concerned, oh, it's safe and whatnot. But, you know, overall, it did look like a, a good time. It was great to see them do an activity all together. And then my favorite part is when they got into the lunch and you see all the foods from Mexico. It's, it looks so yummy. And in the lunch... <sighs> I was hoping, let's have fun, guys. Let's not make it another fight. Because every time they come to eat together, it's always an issue. It's never it's never a good, fun moment. And so the grand dame, of course, she has to ask, how's, uh, she asks Candace, how's your relationship with Ashley? And we have this moment where, like, it's a pause. It's like, oh, no, what's going to happen now? Like... What's going to come between these two after being asked this question? And, you know, Candace, she really, really seems genuine. Candace seems really genuine in wanting to have a friendship with, with Ashley. But she questions how genuine she is, especially when she brings people like Deborah. Like, is that in good faith or is it in bad faith? And, you know... Ashley says that, you know, if it was me, I would want someone to bring the other person so they so we can have the talk. And then Candace gave her such a grown response and said to her that that doesn't even have to happen in the first place. You shouldn't have to feel that there's a lack of trust, a lack of 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 unsafety in which she feels that in her relationship with her husband, Chris, she doesn't even have to entertain a conversation with Deborah because she knows her husband and that Ashley should want that for herself, that you should want to feel like you know your partner in such a way that such situations are not considered normal. Like, this is what should be the typical response in such situation. And, you know, Ashley, she apologized. And I'm happy that she apologized, but this is not the first time Ashley has apologized. So, you know... Candace, she challenges her and says to her, you know, we get to this moment, but then you sabotage it and we're back to this moment again. And we finally hear a little bit of insight from Ashley. And we learned that she actually resents Candace for the fact that Candace was so harsh in how Ashley went through her miscarriage and, you know, that was a hard moment for Ashley or for any woman, you know. And for Candace to never really apologize, Ashley always felt some type of way. And I felt like <clears throat> they were getting in such a good moment that Wendy, she jumped in to try to tell them, oh, let's not rehash this because I like how all three of us, we hang out and it's always a great time. But I felt like, that was a moment for Candace to really apologize to Ashley. So that could be over and ended. It cannot be because you like to hang out with these girls all together that you don't want them to rehash. They should rehash it as many times as possible so the issue could truly be dead and beat down all the way to the ground. Later in the evening... They have a dinner and we have to hear about how Robin doesn't want a wedding. And apparently if she does have the wedding, the non-traditional wedding, it will be in Jamaica the day after her brother-in-law wedding. And all the girls are like, eh, it's interesting how we're hearing all these small details come out little by little. And it's just annoying. I don't want to hear it anymore at this point. Robin, you can just do what you want. Just don't involve the others if you don't want the critiques. Giselle, of course, she has to speak up and say, hey, there's a white elephant, pretty much. We just had an issue with people banging on tables and arguing with each other, Sharice and Karen, and we're pretending that that didn't happen. You guys have to address it tonight. I'm like, I think that is way too soon. I feel like if two, fr if two people are not getting along with each other 
and they happen to be in the same room with each other, just let them be. Just let them deal with it how they handle it. Just, just, just don't make the situation worse. Because at this point, you want them to be pretty much your clowns to entertain you. And you wanted your producer moment. You had it already before. I don't think you can top what you guys did the other day at the dinner before. So uh, it's just like this episode was wasted with so much bickering and fighting over silliness and it's just like (sighs) that's not how you guys should use this platform that's not how you guys should use this opportunity karen makes it clear that this issue is a dead issue for her and sharice she follows and she says well she's the founder of potomac like she's the reason why all these girls are here she's the reason why these girls have a platform to even speak on and it's like she has this moment where she says all these girls i knew and they were at my table and you happen to be at my table and they thought that you knew me and i'm like what a starlit moment like karen should be even more proud because out of the girls sitting at the table even though she didn't know sharice the producers saw something in her that they wanted to include her into this franchise in some sort of way, some sort of capacity. It's just that Sharice didn't like that she was taking the title as the Grand Dam. And you see how the girls, the Green Eye Bandits are rallying up to say that, yeah, Sharice is the real Grand Dame of Potomac. She's the boss like she's the founding mother and it's like ugh, this is crazy this is not what this episode episode should be even discussing I, I i would rate i'm rating this episode like a seven that fight leads to another annoying fight in which it is brought up that people apologize to the group but never to the individual and this brings back the fight between Wendy and Mia. And I'm like, dear God, this episode is, is it's, it's just terrible because you know Mia, she's so stubborn. Even with her best, 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 best friend, she's super stubborn in resolving that friendship. So with Wendy, whom she just recently met, She's definitely not going to like bend so easily or try to even take accountability. And if she does, she dusts it off as, eh, just take it as if it's acceptable. And it's just so annoying to see how these girls just continue to drag old fights, not really recover. I don't haven't seen any sisterly bonding like compared to other franchises this one they really 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 add each other for all the wrong reasons and you know they always get me with the commercial the commercial always look good i like how the commercial leads into miss karen saying oh she thinks that juan is cheating on robin that's why they're not getting married and then robin tries to expose miss karen with photos miss robin who is tmz with the photos with the evidence and everything that okay that preview it got me okay, i'll give this franchise another chance but this episode was so oof, so cringe so cringe and so mm, not fun to talk about i am excited for the real housewives of miami on thursday so i'm gonna look forward to that So, you guys, I want to know what you guys think of this episode. How did you feel about all this arguments between the groups? So, let me know in the comments below. Like and share to your friends. That will be much appreciated. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.